Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever and whenever you are. I don't know if you heard that rooster in the background, but you can tell that it's morning here. And I'm recording another video for a Game Maker tutorial. So, my name is Ben. Thank you for watching this video. Let's get started. This was actually a request tutorial. Somebody wanted to know how to have damage shown above enemies when, in fact, let me uh, let me find out who it was. I'm pretty sure th that it had guy in his name, but it's hard to remember Twitter handlers. So uh, let's go check it out and find out who exactly requested this tutorial. And it was sniper three six five or three four five. Pretty sure. Cody T. Yep. And let me show you, I'll even show you the image that he had for his game because I remember it was pretty awesome. He must have uh, maybe photoshopped that damage in, but what he wants is he wants to know how to show a damage like that every time you attack a player. So, pretty awesome. I'm loving his graphics there. Let's, uh, let's make this tutorial video. Where's Game Maker? Okay. First thing we're going to do is create a, a sprite for our enemy. I'm going to make this a generic example so it can be incorporated in almost any game. His game or your game. That way we can all learn from this. So we're going to make this just a red circle for our enemy. And let's center that. Okay. I just made an enemy sprite. And I'm going to call this object enemy. And there we go. Okay. I'm going to create another object. This is going to be called object uh, damage. Okay. <clears throat> now this object <clears throat> is going to have a create event. And inside of this create event, we're going to give it a variable called string. I'm just going to do str and we'll do equal to just two single quotations like that. It's an empty string value. Now, <clears throat> the other thing we're going to do is we're going to draw, create a draw event, bring over a code, and this one is going to be where we actually draw the damage. Three, four. We're going to do draw text color because probably you want it to be a color. We'll do x, y, str, which is the string that we just created. Let's look at our arguments. So each, uh, whenever you do a function like this, draw text color, it's going to have so many arguments in here that you're going to want to fill out. And I just lost what all the arguments were because it tells you down here in the bottom, draw text color. So this might be a little bit different in Game Maker Studio. I don't remember exactly, but just know that uh, if you follow these arguments down here, you should be fine. This might be the same in Studio as well. So it looks like we have four color arguments, C1, C2, C3, and C4, and then an alpha value. So we're going to do C red for our colors. Well, let's see. How did he have that? Uh, how did he have his... Look, yeah, it looks like it's just uh, red, pretty much. So we'll just do red all the way across. C, red, C, red. Awesome. Oh, we got to have our alpha argument. Image alpha. We'll do that. Okay. Awesome. Let's uh, add a new event, add a step event. And what this is going to do is it's going to do, we're going to make this, um, first of all, we're going to make it go upwards in an upwards direction. We're going to make it fade away so it kind of disappears. How we're going to do this is if image alpha is greater than or equal to zero. So your image alpha is basically how transparent the sprite is. So if your image alpha equals zero, you can't see the image. If it's one, then you can see the image completely. If it's 0.5, then it's halfway transparent. So what we're checking is to see if we're not invisible yet. So if we're not invisible yet, then the minus equals 
zero five. I don't know. We might have to change that later, that number. But if you're not invisible, let's go invisible, okay? Else, if you are invisible, two, three, four, image, let's see, instance, destroy. Let's destroy this object so it goes away. And I think that's good. The damage should be in there. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to simulate an attack. And the way I'm going to do that is with a mouse click. So the mouse event, left button. Well, let's see. Add event, mouse, left pressed. So whenever we click on the enemy, it's going to simulate an attack. Basically, what code I put here is the same code that you want to put wherever your actual damage is. So now inside of here, we're going to do a code. And we're going to do instance. Well, let's see. We'll do let's do i equals instance create x y minus thirty two object damage. Okay. So what we're doing here this this i, which we're actually going to have to create that variable inside the create event. Unless you're in studio, in studio you don't have to, but here we do. So, um, one, two, three, four, i equals, we'll just do that. So we're creating the variable there. Um, I'm going to start using studio. I just need to get some better screen recording software. And then I can use Studio instead of the Game Maker for Mac version. Because they're not updating this, this version anymore. So, okay. So, what this does is it assigns this instance that we're creating here to this variable. Basically, that just allows us to do stuff with the variable after. So, we're going to do i, i dot string equals string. And inside of the string argument, this would be where you put the amount of damage that you did. So, you know, if your player does 5 damage, if he does 10 damage, if he does, if you have some attack like global damage, global dot damage, or damage, if you've got a variable, you'd want to put that in here. For now, I'm just going to set this to 5. Let's do 7, actually. We'll do 7 damage. And this should work now. Let's go try it out. So let me reiterate this. When you, this is simulating an attack right here, this left pressed button. So wherever your attack is, wherever the damage gets done to the enemy, you want this code in there. And if you get a, an error that has something to do with an I, then that probably means you didn't create the I variable. So you've just got to create it in the create event. So let's create our room here and put our enemy in and let's see if this works I didn't really test this one beforehand <laughs> so we'll see what goes on okay cool you can see it shows the damage above the above the enemy let's do a couple more things on it if you uh... whoops if you One thing that I would do to it is to make the damage kind of go up to the top, right? And we're not really doing that right now. So let's let's add a motion into this. So direction, well, let's do this. Y minus equals 4. That looks good. And another thing I want to do is I want to make sure this is centered. So let's do draw set H align. Oh. It's like, why is that not working? GM, there we go. FA center. Now, if you want to also center it on the vertical align, you do it like this draw set V align FA middle. Okay, we'll just do both just for kicks, but basically, this will center all of your texts. And you want to have this actually. <laughs> You want to have this before here, and if you have other texts that aren't centered, then you'll have to set it back to normal in other places, but you'll figure that out. So, okay, let's try this, 
and this should look a little bit better. Yep, so it's centered and it kind of rises above them. So that simulates an attack. Um, one more thing I'd like to mention is you can create a font and use do you know whatever font you want. So that's something that you might want to do as well. And I would just recommend using what's a function called draw set font. And then just set, put that font in here if it's like font one or whatever you name it, put it in here. And that would be how you'd choose a different font for your image so that you can customize a little bit more. So I hope this video helped you. Um, at least, if anything, if you're not looking to show damage with an enemy, maybe you're wanting to show how much health the enemy has left or whatever, you can do all of that using the same method. And um, one other thing you can do is if your enemy is moving, you'll want to uh, make, the, make the damage follow the enemy. And the way that you do that is in here you've created... Well, actually, I'm, I'm running down a rabbit hole with that one because that gets a little bit more complicated. So since in this example, it's perfect because it's just going to disappear anyways. It doesn't really need to follow the enemy. But, yep, that's how you do it. Thanks for watching. Be sure and subscribe. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Like my Facebook. Share this videos. Oh, like this video. Be sure and like this video. That really helps me when you guys like my videos. And I love all the comments you've been sending me. I'm going to continue to do more videos. I'm pretty excited for some of the stuff that I've got coming up. So if you guys have any requests, you can email them to me at heartbeast.studios at gmail.com. Email them to me, and I'll get those requests done for you. If there's a specific part of your game that you're struggling with, I'll do my best to help you out. So uh, you guys have a great day, and I'll talk to you